In terms of titanium, uh, you know, the uh, product offering there really is aimed at the mission critical platforms. Uh, and these mission critical platforms are defined largely by the operating system and the applications that sit atop those, uh, those uh, platforms. And when you think about that, it's where are the major OSs for mission critical computing? You go and ask HP, where are your major mission critical computing on HP UX and on nonstop? They're on Itanium. Right? Do they offer those on Xeon? No. Right? You go ask the same question of a Fujitsu or a Hitachi or an NEC, right? It's mission critical as defined by the full system characteristics, right? Which start at the silicon, you know, certain mission critical and RAS features built through the operating system and through the application stack. Those aren't available in Xeon. Right. Those platforms are specifically going into that very high-end mission-critical uh, computing space. And Itanium continues to gain share versus Spark and Power, the two primary competitors uh, in that space. At the same time, we're making Xeon a better better platform. And for instance, as you've seen recently, you might have noticed like in the high-performance computing uh, top 500 list, right, Xeon was a larger percentage of that list. We're making it better, making it higher performance, uh, higher density performance, and that's where you'll see Xeon just continue to move up and up uh, the stack of uh, system designs. So we don't see it as one replacing the other, even though incrementally we see this expansion of the IA space from milliwatts to petaflops.